All right, I think I am live. Let me just do a little check here. Sorry, it always takes a few, there's about a 30 second delay from when I push start to when we start seeing things online. I wanna make sure that everything's a go before I actually start doing my thing. Welcome everybody. Let's see here. Oh, I think we're live. Okay. Uh, hey, this is Lucas Miller. Thanks for tuning in uh, to my live stream. I'm trying to do this once a month, and this month I decided to get crafty. So let's see if we can make some stuff together. It's going to be fun. It's going to be different. And uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to a answer questions and stuff. I don't have a guitar nearby, so I won't be able to play music, but uh, I'm glad to answer questions. Um, I have a lot of stuff happening. I got a camera up there. I have a computer over here that I use to switch to different cameras. Hello. Uh, I also have a laptop hooked up. So all of this stuff is hopefully gonna work for me. And um, I was gonna see if I could use my iPad to see comments, but I'm not sure that's gonna work. So if you leave a comment and I don't reply, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, let's get started. So uh, we are going to do something by request. Um, my last few videos have had a lot of things made uh, here in my studio with construction paper and just stuff that you've got at home too. Um, it started with the song called The Right Beat to Region. And I had been using some fancy software to make pictures look like they were talking and stuff like that. And I thought, you know, let's just go like, let's just make some paper bag puppets <laughs> and make them dance, make them look like they're singing. And I had so much fun with that. I did another one that is for the cheetah song. And I think that one came out even better um, using my cheetah guy here. So this is the actual guy who's in the uh, music video. And I had this all set up with like grass and a scene in the background and I had animals that it was chasing and stuff like that. So it had its arms move as you can see and it has a big old steak in its mouth, yum, because he eats Mita. So anyway, I've been having so much fun with that. It's kind of become, I feel like my thing. This is the way I make videos now. It's so much fun and What's cool is uh, you can make a lot of the stuff that is in these videos. And I actually had a fan, who's also an artist, she's amazing, uh, make a fruit bat for my most recent video. So if you've not seen the fruit bat video, make sure you tune into that. Um, so we are gonna be having fun. I, I want you to use your creativity. So it's not about making exactly what I've made, okay? These guys are cool. I'll show you how I put these together, but I want you to make your own thing. That's what creativity is all about. Now, yes, you can watch how I do this and then you can use some of those techniques for yourself, but don't try to make exactly this guy and don't try to make exactly that guy. Make your own thing, okay? Um, so that's kind of my message. Uh, I think a lot of people get really caught up in making it look like somebody else's. Or sometimes you've got something in mind and you can't make it look the way you've got it pictured in your mind. And that, that can be frustrating, but it's all about being creative, being fun and making stuff. We do too much with, you know, iPads and, you know, technology and phones and stuff like that. So here's, here's the, the thing. We're just gonna use some stuff that I think you've probably already got at home. All right. Um, okay, so there's a lesson here that I'm hoping that you learn. And that is a lesson in what are called adaptations. What are adaptations? There we are. <laughs> adaptations are special features that animals have, okay? And they help organisms survive. So animals have adaptations, plants have adaptations, fungi have <laughs> adaptations, single-celled organisms have adaptations they help them survive in different ways, okay? So 
sorry, I'm in the way here. Oh, there we go. Uh, some adaptations help animals live in a certain environment. Okay, think about this. What does this Arctic fox have to keep it warm in that icy, snowy tundra? Yeah, I know. You know exactly what it's got. It's got some extra thick fur, right? And it also has really small ears. Small ears help you um, conserve your heat. Your ears have very thin skin, so uh, heat can escape. Now, if you live in a really hot place, like this guy, you are gonna use that to your advantage. All right, these great big ears on a jackrabbit actually help it uh, get rid of the heat. It's the word is dissipate. So if you've never heard the word dissipate, dissipate, dissipate is kind of like release. So the blood goes into those ears and it, it gets cooled off whatever temperature the air is around them and then it comes back. So this is why on a cold day your ears get so cold. Uh, you're dissipating your heat and the ears are taking on the temperature of that cold air around you. Okay? Um, so they're, they've got some crazy big ears. That is another adaptation. Awesome. All right. Adaptations can help you eat things too. Okay. What does this chameleon have for helping it eat insects? Well, there is a, there is a bug. You see that stick on the left side of the screen? On the very tip of that stick, there's a fly. And you can see he's sticking his tongue out zap, grabs that fly, pulls it back into its mouth. Its tongue is stretchy, and look, it actually kind of wraps around that bug too. It's like a little sticky hand or something, all right? That is another adaptation. Adaptations are awesome, okay? Um, what do alligators have for eating meat? Hmm, 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 I bet you know. <laughs> they have sharp teeth, yeah. All right, that's another adaptation. Now let's say you eat plants. Like this guy, this, this, is the, this is from a museum. This is the skull of a cow. And if you look at those teeth, they're not sharp really, they're more for grinding, all right? So they're flat and they have ridges, and they grind up those leaves. So if you're gonna eat plants, you gotta grind them up well. This is when we look at, when we look at the teeth of something like a tri uh, triceratops, we can tell that it ate plants because its teeth look like that. And when we look at the teeth of a T-Rex, we know that it was eating meat because it's got sharp knife-like teeth. Mm. All right, all right, so do birds have teeth? No, they don't have teeth. They do not have teeth. All right, even roosters do not have teeth. You might have heard of rooster teeth. Um, birds have different beaks instead, and they help them eat different things, okay? So that's an eagle, and I bet you know what eagles eat. Yep, they eat meat, so they're gonna catch fish, and they eat some other meat too. They've got a hooked, sharp beak for catching that, those fish, and well, for eating those fish. They catch them with their claws. All right, what does a pelican have for catching fish? Mm -hmm. Yep, see it right there. It's got a big old pouch, right? So it scoops up that water. Hopefully there's a fish there, drains out the water, and throws that fish down his throat. Yum. All right, guess why this guy is called a spoonbill? <laughs> Do you see that bill? It looks kind of like a spoon. And it's a, it uses it more like a pair of tongs, if you know what tongs are. It looks like a spoon, but what they do is they poke their beak down into the muddy bottom of a wetland, and they grab a hunk of mud, and then they kind of shake their head back and forth, and that gets rid of the little particles, and they hold onto the big stuff, which is hopefully some kind of little crustacean or some kind of worm or something in that, in that soil. So these guys, they're kind of like filter feeders, all right? All right, this guy's beak is amazing. 
uh, it can actually open a clam. I don't know if you've ever tried to pry open a clam, but it is, it is impossible to do without some tools. Okay, uh, maybe you could throw it on a rock and break it like that, but to pry it open, we can't do it. But these guys have got a super strong beak. Now the first thing they do is they poke that beak down into the sand. So they're looking for clams and they uh, can tell where they are. They poke it down, they grab that clam with their beak and then they pry it open and they get to that soft stuff inside. It's amazing, it's called an oyster catcher. Again, if you haven't watched the video of Right Beak to Reach It, check it out because that stuff is all uh, shown in very good detail in that video. So take, take a look at that. Um, all right, so now it is time to get creative. Yes, I love being creative. We are gonna make some birds and I want you to give your bird a beak that is adapted for eating a certain kind of food, okay? So first, whoops, wrong thing, Oop, there we go. Think of a food that a bird might eat. Now, it can be real, like, I don't know, a bee, all right? Or it could be silly, like a cheeseburger or some m ms <laughs> something like that. So think of a food that your bird is gonna eat. Now, once you've got that, create a bird with a beak that is adapted for eating that food. So what kind of beak is gonna be good for eating that food. Um, I think I'm gonna make a hummingbird, all right? And it's gonna have a long beak like a straw. So I might, I've gotta think about how I'm gonna do that, but we're gonna give it a beak like a straw. If you want your bird's beak to eat pizza, <laughs> maybe it's a big triangle shaped beak so I could just, uh, or maybe it's got like a, a beak like a pizza cutter. <laughs> or uh, if you want your bird to eat um, an ice cream cone, it could have um, a beak kind of like a spoon, right? To, sc to uh, scoop up some ice cream or like a big tongue to help it lick the ice cream right off the cone. I don't know, it is up to you. You are the creative one, okay? So use your imagination here. Um, so that's gonna be the first thing we do. And this is what you're gonna need. So um, this is a group that I did this activity with at a library last summer. And we brought lots of construction paper. So uh, the first thing you're gonna need, of course, is a paper bag. I'm gonna use this one. It's actually one of those little gift bags. All right, so it would be a good way to reuse a gift bag. You can put your hand in there. So uh, the way these guys work, all right. Hang on, Oop. get rid of this. Oop. Okay, so the way this works is you put your hand in there and that part, okay, is gonna be its face. So its beak is gonna be like right there. And uh, you notice that this guy's got a beak that's kind of glued down there. All right, so it looks like it op opens his beak. Um, so get yourself a bag. I, I'm using one of these gift bags. This is a cheap one from uh, the grocery store. Um, if you've got some of these, go for it. Uh, I've just bought these and they're really, they're too big. So, I mean, they're fine, but they're, they're kind of big to be certainly a kid's hand puppet. So a regular size, not a giant size lunch bag would be the, the ideal thing. But whatever you got, whatever you got. It's, if that's what you got, you got, okay? Um, okay, back over here. Oh, uh, and I've got some more supplies for you. So uh, this is where I wanted to be. Do, 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 do. All right, so you need a paper bag, right? You're gonna need um, some colorful paper, okay? So I have some construction paper, all right? Great construction paper from, I don't know, I think I got it off the Amazon. 
but whatever you got. So if you don't have construction paper, you can use paper from like newspapers or magazines or if you have some wrapping paper, I actually think wrapping paper would really be a really fun way to do this. Um, so you're gonna need some construction paper, okay? Or some kind of, some kind of colorful paper. Um, you are probably going to want some glue or some tape. Um, glue sticks are my preference. I don't have a glue stick today, so I'm just gonna use a, a liquid glue from a container. Um, you are gonna want some scissors, all right, because you're gonna be cutting pieces of paper out to fit, right? You're gonna need some kind of color tool. So it could be markers, you could do paint, you could do crayons, whatever you wanna do. It's all good, right? Whatever you have, don't, don't fret if you don't have uh, exactly what you want. Uh, here are some optional things, okay? Number one, foam, all right? When people say, how did you do the beaks on these puppets, all right? Um, the most of this is made from paper, but the beaks are made from these foam sheets. I'm gonna switch cameras here. All right, so this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. You can see it's a lot thicker and it holds its shape, okay? So if you have any of these foam, she foam sheets, go for it, okay? If you don't have any of these foam sheets, you can figure it out. One of the things about this is it's, it's all just problem solving. <laughs> uh, you just have to figure out. So like each one of these beaks was like a little challenge. How can I make this the way I want it? How can I make this the way I want it? How can I make this one? So each one of them is like a little puzzle and that's for you to figure out. It's for you to do, okay? Um, all right, so foam sheets. Next, paper cutter, okay? What I'm talking about is one of these guys. These are safe for kids to use. I would have a grown-up nearby, but there's you really would have to work hard to hurt yourself on these. Um, and they are awesome for cutting paper. So let me just show you. I'm gonna uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna just take the cover off of this. All right, I'm gonna take the cover off there. You put this in here, and you press down. Is that gonna focus? There we go, okay. And it makes this beautiful straight line. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing, look at that. <laughs> so one of the things that makes my puppets look neat is I use this. Sometimes you don't want your puppets to look neat. You want your puppets to be a little, bit like, I don't know, not messy, not ragged, but natural, right? Um, having a rough edge could make it look like it's got feathers. I don't know. So uh, a paper cutter is nice, but it's not essential. Next, you're gonna need pops. Well, these are optionals. You may want popsicle sticks. So um, to go back over here, boop -a -doop. Um, this guy has a popsicle stick underneath there. See what I did? All right, and that gives it a little more um, rigidity. All right, makes it harder. So um, when he sings, I got the right beak, right beak to reach, I got the right beak, you can do that all day long and it's not gonna get all, you know, bent out of shape or anything. Okay, so popsicle sticks are useful, not essential. Um, and what else is on my list of optional things? Uh, bird books or pictures. So you can just look a bird up on the internet or if you've got a bird book nearby, I have these cool bird cards. You can kind of go through there and see like, oh, that's what color they are. That's kind of cool. All right, and last but not least is you may want a ruler to help you make straight um, lines for cutting along or for measuring the uh, paper bags. All right, so here's here's what I'm talking about. So um, Let's see this guy is Five and a half Sorry, there we go five and a half inches wide and so I'm gonna start I'm gonna make this guy 
What color should I make him? Mm, let's see, if it's gonna be a hummingbird, let's make it green. So I got a nice green piece of um, construction paper. And I am going to measure five and a half inches from here. Let's see, five and a half inches. You know what else you're gonna need is a pencil. Okay, so five and a half inches is right there. I'm gonna use one of my markers. Boop. Okay. And now I can put this in here, line up that mark with this little, uh, it's hard to see, but there's a little kind of a channel down the middle there where this little blade goes. And so I've got a five and a half inches and it's gonna fit exactly, exactly, well, he's a little, little wide, but almost exactly across here. Now what I do is I also measure, there it is, how, um, how deep this is. So this is three and a quarter inches. All right, so we're gonna make another measurement here. And we'll go right there. Boop. Whenever I make a line, I have to go boop. <laughs> Feel free, that's what, that's what all the great artists do. They go boop. Okay, so now you'll see that I have a piece that I can glue up here, and I have a piece that goes down here. Now I'm probably like that. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so there we have it. So that is how I start. Um, what I would like you to do is actually start with your beak, okay? I kind of got ahead of it a little bit. So let's make the beak first. Um, I am going to do this without any uh, foam paper. I'm just going to do it with regular construction paper so that I can show that, yes, you can do this. Now, hummingbirds have got a long, skinny beak, and it wor it's a little bit like a straw. What's actually going on is they have a tongue inside the beak, and the tongue has little bristles all over it. So when they are taking nectar from a flower, what they're really doing is poking their tongue down in that flower and uh, the nectar kind of goes up on their tongue and then they bring in their tongue and swallow it down, okay? All right, I'm gonna leave this in. I'm gonna make a yellow beak. Is that, no, that seems like the wrong color. What color beak should we make? Let's make a black. I'm gonna make a black beak. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna make a skinny piece of uh, a skinny strip of black paper. One thing I will say is I like uh, I like to conserve my materials. This stuff is is I buy good construction paper. Uh, because I love it and good construction paper is a lot better than cheap construction paper. It is. It's just a lot better. And um, I try to, so I take off this, but I'm, I'm leaving it in there so that it stays, uh, you know, flat and un, unwrinkled for next time I use it. Um, I would not ever take an entire piece of paper and then cut off this and throw it away. That's wasteful. <laughs> the other thing that I will say is... Uh, I try to use all materials that can be either recycled or break down uh, or stuff that's uh, garbage. I don't like using things that are made from plastic um, because 
that plastic is going to stick around forever. And I hate the idea of me making a little craft to have fun and teach kids about animals and how great Earth is, and I'm making it from uh, plastic that's going to stick around for centuries, right? That wouldn't otherwise be there. Um, all right, so I think I probably did not do this very well. Um, I'm gonna, so here's my problem, is I, I wanna make this into kind of a tube, and I didn't make it very wide, and now I'm afraid if I bend it, it's gonna turn into like a crease instead of a tube. So I'm gonna use a marker and see if I can bend it around that. Okay. So yeah, use your materials wisely and save your scraps. Um, if you saw my fruit bat video, almost every single thing in that video is like made from just pieces of paper, a lot of it's scraps. I went to a place called Austin Creative Reuse where they have like, you know, pa packets of construction paper for like $2. It was amazing. Okay, so um, here is my, whoops. Wrong one. There we go. Here is my bird. Um, it's got a beak. It's very long. And um, it's not quite the way I wanted it to be, but I think I'm just going to go with it. Um, I want it to be uh, kind of like a little needle. And so I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to Give it kind of a V shape, if that makes sense. Hmm. All right, pretty good. Okay, so um, the first thing I will say is the, um, the, the place to actually start is once you've got your beak made, where do you want to put it? How do you want to attach it? Don't attach this stuff until you know that. It may be you want to put it underneath here like that. It may be that you want it in between, like that. It may be that you want it like this. So the beak is the most important part here. And I don't want you to uh, glue these other pieces down until you have decided how to attach that beak. Um, now, let's see here. I am going to, I think I am going to do it kind of in between there like that. And um, if you glued it at the very tip like that, it would probably come out. So you want to, I'm going to give it a good, uh, good attachment point, like with a couple of inches. My glue got left open. There we go. I wish I had a glue stick. There's so much better. That's too much glue. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spread that around. Uh, this is another reason that construction paper works well is it's thicker and um, it can it doesn't show the glue coming through so much. So if you use thin paper, the this kind of glue at least makes it soggy. Oops, there we go. And it'll you can tell when it dries. Um, a good example of that was, is my little white puppet here. You can see kind of wrinkles in his head. <laughs> and I don't know if you could tell there, there's some places where the color kind of bleeds through a little bit. Um, so yeah, I would say, oops, I did this the wrong way. Like that, there we go. I would say, um, use the thickest paper you could find. Okay. Kind of cute. All right, so we have that. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue this part down here. I think he's gonna need, so a lot of times they have, um, there's, uh, they have kind of a purpley pink uh, ring around their neck. So I'm gonna take a piece of, I'm gonna take purple construction paper. And we're going to make it the same width. 
so where's my pen there we go gonna make this right cut this right there um, by the way this little paper cutter I use I got on Amazon it's like it's like the same price as a pair of, a good pair of scissors and it works so great uh, I use it a lot on my cheetah puppet all right so there we go nice um, all right and so I'm gonna give this it's gonna go underneath there like that and then I am going to cut a like kind of a half circle here hope you guys are having fun I have not checked for um, comments so I apologize if you are trying to get a shout out or something um, my uh, the way I'm looking at it on YouTube doesn't show me the comments somehow. I think it, you know what, it's, it, it's marked made for kids. And I think that there are no comments allowed on made for kids videos. Okay. So you see what I've done there? Ooh, that's kind of cool. I think, um, I think I want this to be higher up. So I'm going to cut off some from the back. All right, let's glue this. Um, so I want this to be on top. I want the purple to be on top. I'm gonna glue it in first, but uh, I want it to be like that. So you wanna make sure you don't put glue um, right over under there, right under there, okay? Next time I'm gonna put the camera on the other side because I'm mostly right-handed. So let's try this now. I'm gonna put this underneath there, but don't let the purple come down and touch it. Okay, there we go. And now I've got that attached and I wanna attach the purple. So now I'm gonna go under here. I'm sure you guys, I'm not teaching you anything really new. My thing, my main message is just just try it, just do your thing, just be creative. So we've got a bird, an eyeless bird. <laughs> um, hang on. Hello. So he's looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good. Obviously he needs some eyes and we may want to put on some wings too. So um, let's see. I would also like it if this little bit of white were showing. I can, I'm not too late. I already glued it down. That's all right. Like I said, it's never going to be perfect. All right. So we've got a bird with a beak that's made for sipping nectar. All right. I need a flower that I can <laughs> show you how to do this. Um, there we go. And uh, let's make some eyes. So uh, again, this is a good place for foamy stuff. I am gonna save my foam for another uh, project. I'm just gonna do it with paper. Okay, you could also just draw the eyes on, but I think it's really fun to um, cut out some eyes. So let's see, let's give it some yellow eyes. And um, I'm gonna do that trick. You guys have probably seen this trick before, where you fold it in half, and then you cut a shape out and you have two of the exact same shape. All right, so. That way they are matching. I did that a lot with the cheetah to make sure it didn't look all <laughs> weird on one side. Okay. so. Let's see here. Let's see what you think of that. All right. Looking pretty good. Uh, let's see. How can we make those eyes? We need some black spots on the sides. Let me find that piece of black paper that I cut into a little while ago. There it is. And do, oh, you know what? Actually, I have these little scraps right here from the beak. 
I'm going to use those scraps. So eyes, when you give something eyes, it comes to life. It is amazing. Um, and you can, I like to really play with the eyes because they are so much, do you see what I mean? <laughs> There's so much the character of um, your thing. So like you could put these eyes really close together and it would look kind of goofy. And you could put the eyes really far apart and it would look kind of goofy. You could put them like uh, up and down. If you want to look silly, go for it, right? Um, and you can, this thing can go in there like that and we can make it kind of look like it's cross-eyed. Um, let's see here. This is a very small piece of paper. Good scissors. Good scissors are worth it. Okay. So like this one is not a circle. It's a kind of a half circle. But sometimes that looks really cute. Actually, I kind of like that. So I'm going to make my other one a half circle as well. See what I'm saying? We just play and see what we get and give it some life. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, put them in a position that I think I like. So let's make it like eyes kind of close right in front of its beak there. What do you think of that? Does that look good? Um, or maybe in the middle? Or maybe at the top? Or I think of that. I think I'm going with this. Now they can go like this, and then it looks like it's looking up a little bit. They can go toward the middle, and then it looks like it's kind of cross-eyed. I'm just going to do regular old in the middle like that. I think that's my. I think that's my decision. I'm not going to do anything too weird. Just one little drop of glue. You gotta be really careful not to lose your pieces. Okay. Now I like the to have um, glue and mistakes and like I like to have it apparent how I did something. So don't be too obsessed about being perfectly neat. I like, I like people to be able to see how I did it. So in the fruit bat video, when I made a seed drop, I used a little kind of a stick made out of construction paper to make the seed drop and you can see it. It's not super obvious, but you can see it. You can see my hand twisting the seed as it, as it goes along the ground too. And I'm okay with that. I like that actually. I want you guys to be able to see what I do. So here we have a nice little bird puppet. It does, it would benefit from some wings. Um, I think we should probably make some green wings and I have that green paper left. I think, where did it go? Hmm. I don't know. Where did I go with that paper? Hmm. Oh well. I might have to tear off a new piece of green paper. Because I can't find the one that I had before. I don't like, like I said, try to conserve my materials as much as you can. But we're live and we don't want to waste our time with that. Um, okay, so um, I will make some wings. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Um, again, let's fold this in half and make it wing-shaped. <laughs> what do you think? So it should probably go like that. We'll cut a piece like that. Okay. Um, okay, see what I did there? Okay, and now this part is going to be hidden, so we can kind of go like... Alright. And we want 
want it to have it look like it has feathers. So we're just going to do a bunch of little cuts like this. All right. Does that look like wings? Now I made a mistake with this guy and I, um, when I attach the wings, you can see it's all messy on this side. Um, when I put this wing in there, it, uh, it glued to the crease. So I think what I've decided is that the best way to do the wings is to glue them on the back like this instead of in this little space there. Okay, so let's do that. camera a little bit. Good. So we got them right like that. Looking like this. Okay. The other one can go on there like that. Now, you know what we can do is put the glue on this side and then we can position it wherever we want on that side. It's all just figuring it out. My big lesson here. All right. So there we have it. Um, now, here's kind of a fun thing. We have these little doodads on the bottom from the um, gift handles, the gift bag handles. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it look like feet. Actually, I could even just use these. Let's see. Might be kind of cool. They don't want it to have four legs because birds don't have four legs. They have two legs and two wings. Woo! So we could use these like that. I don't know if that's going to stay or not. And make a little foot. Uh, I don't know. Let's do something different. I'm not sure I like that. Uh, we've got these little scraps of yellow. We could use those. So we could do it kind of like this. I don't know, I'm just messing around. I'm gonna see if this even works. Put that right there. And hopefully it will stay. I'm gonna put, boop, doop, doop. And my sound effects again. This guy over here. Uh, all right. So you want as much uh, of the paper touching the, um, in this case, this little handle as possible. That way it's got more to stick to. <laughs> I don't know about those feet. <laughs> like I said, sometimes things work. Sometimes they don't. That's pretty cool. That's cute. I like it. Um, all right. So that is my bird. I would love to see a picture of your bird. If you uh, want to send me a picture of your bird, you can post that. I'm on Instagram. I think it's at Singing Zoologist, I believe. Uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook. You can look me up on Facebook, Singing Zoologist on Facebook, and uh, show me what you made. I want to see them. Um, in my uh, instructions, you see some cool creations. So here's a kid making one like my uh, spoonbill. We already went through all these. 
I guess that's it. Okay. Oh, hang on. That's the bird song. <laughs> we can show that in a minute. All right. So, and then here, well, never mind. Uh, there's another one on that end here that I'm not going to worry about. Um, so, as far as how that I do these, um, real quick, I will show you that this one is foam. I took two pieces of foam. Can you see that? Uh, there we go. And I made them into kind of a focus, focus. Come on camera, you can do it. Well, I took them and made them into kind of an arch shape or an arc, and then I glued them together. Um, actually, I think what I did is I made a triangle and I cut a little section out and then I glued it together. So just experiment and see what you can do with yours. So whatever you want to make. The um, spoon bill, I kind of gave you a look at this. That was a pretty easy beak to make. And then I glued part of it underneath so it looked like he was opening his bill when he was opening his mouth. Kind of cool. Um, this one has a, this is the oyster catcher. It's got a real big, strong bill, like a, like a drill actually. And I actually, to reinforce it, I put a straw in, oh no, I'm sorry, that's a marker. <laughs> that's an old marker that was out of, uh, out of whatever ink. And so I use that. So again, I'm, I'm always looking at using stuff that I might throw away to make my puppets. Uh, the eyes are the little foam and I just drew on those little uh, pupils and I drew on these little lines there. So I, a lot of times I'll look at a picture of the bird and then I'll pick a few elements to imitate. Um, here's a duck. You can see his bill is made of two pieces of that foam. I've drawn on the lines like it has and the markings like it has. The eyes are just construction paper again. Uh, this was the hard one, the pelican. So I, I knew the song had to have a pelican and I knew it was going to be hard to make this when I did it. So I found a little pouch in my kitchen and I used some food coloring actually to dye it pink. It was kind of a whitish color. And um, then I needed a way to kind of make the mouth stand open. And this is actually where the drawstring was. I put in a thick guitar string and that made it hold its shape a little bit. So it's, a, it's like a problem solving e experiment. Um, and then this is on the top, just another piece of foam. You can see I sliced it and then I kind of folded one over the other like that to give it a little more shape. I think that's the hard the, the hard thing here is to get a, give things a shape, and foam, foamy stuff is good for that. Um, I kind of cut out this little thing here to make it look like its eyes. I looked at a picture of a pelican and they had that, and then um, I just wanted it to have some funny little feathers on top of its head, so you can see there that I put those funny little feathers on top of its head. Um, over here, I just drew these little lines on there to make it look like feathers. But over here I cut some lines in this stuff on its chest to make it look more feathery. Okay, so I think that's it. I think that's all I gotta do. I think that's all I've gotta say for you today. Um, if you, again, could share your pictures with me, you can also, I think there's a link on my email address on my channel, you can email me. Um, easiest thing would be to do Instagram and tag me or uh, post it on my uh, Facebook page. But that is going to do it for me, you guys. I hope you had fun. Um, I will do another. Um, I'll show you how to make one of these on another one. This one's pretty easy. Um, he came out so great. Um, maybe easy isn't the right word, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's not super hard. So I will show you how to make a cheetah puppet for yourself. All right. On another episode of getting crafty with the singing zoologist. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you had fun. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, you can leave me comments on my channel. I don't think you can do it on this video, but you can leave me comments on the channel. 
And I think that is going to do it for me. 